the the opening match Rhea and Ripley or Rhea and Ripley Rhea and Liv was actually I enjoyed it much more than I thought I would but I think this one had to be the totality and the story of it I think this was probably my favorite match of the night and this was maybe oh, a okay. little bit of biasy nice. Punk and uh, Drew McIntyre now of there were some like yeah of course sorry there were some <laughs> eh moments and some sh- some things that maybe I was like kind of like questioning but as a Talking whole i love this yeah <laughs> as a whole i love this story i love the callback to the 97 um summer slam of course you had undertaker sean and um bret hart um so with me i and it's funny because again when i when i read on twitter um it's just it's just kind of funny to me because a lot of people are like oh like like they they're viewing punk as that dumb baby face and this is what i was saying earlier like oh that dumb baby face syndrome where it's like oh like how could you be like why are you distracted by someone like someone's music playing like shit like that and and to me that wasn't the case at all (laughs) to me this wasn't that (laughs) that's always funny to me like why are you distracted by music playing that's that's a like a yeah. funny thing in wrestling for years. It's like, it why do you stop doing what you're doing because somebody? And it's like you that. freeze. It's like you freeze, <laughs> yeah. and you can't do anything until they make it to the ring. It's like you still have a good 15 seconds, so you can finish your three oh, count. Man. You can do whatever That's you're gonna so do, good. but it's like, no, I can't do anything because I'm I'm frozen for the next 30 seconds. Yeah. So it's like, all right, bro, <laughs> fucking whatever. Um, oh, but so with this one, to me, and of course, the story with this one was the this wasn't the, it wasn't the match itself. It was a story, obviously, with Drew and punk despising each other i don't think they really needed the inclusion of seth i get it right it added another layer to it and it just spiced things up Mm. more for punk and seth going forward um but to me i don't think especially maybe even right now like if you wanted to have seth involved maybe do it after punk and drew had their first encounter have it pretty much in the same way but you don't have seth involved and then Punk is gonna want his revenge. Punk is pissed, and then that's when the referees are like, "Fuck, I don't want to. I don't want to be involved with these guys." Then you have Adam Pierce kind of freaking out. He's like, "Well, I don't know what to do. I can't control these guys." And then Seth is like, "I don't like these guys either." But you know, like have then you can get Seth involved that way, um, and just kind of extend it. Maybe another month from now, or leading into a bad blood. Um, but to me, the and again, people, some people are like, oh, it's stupid. It's like a 50 cent bracelet. It's not the value of the bracelet. And that, to me, that that's the most laughable part of the, of the feedback that I was reading. It's like, oh, like, why does punk care so much about this stupid bracelet? Like, oh, like, it doesn't make sense. Like, it does make sense if you if you just take a second and think about it. And again, I'm not saying like, I, I know all this shit, but it's like, it's just kind of obvious to me. It's the symbolism. It's the fact that a fan gave him this bracelet. You don't even need to know the story, even if you don't know where he got it from. Long story short, it's a bracelet with his wife and his dog's name on it, and it means something to him. And the fact that it means something to him, Drew wants it. And I'm surprised Drew hasn't ripped it apart by now, which obviously we see why. Um, because that's what I was expecting going into this match, him to just snap it. Um, but it's it's the symbolism. It's the fact that Drew has been wearing something with another man's wife's name on it and another man's dog on yeah. it. And if you know anything about punk, you know his and dog the fans is his love wife. AJ Lee. Yes, yes. Those are and, the two and, and most Larry. prized things in his life. Yeah, is AJ yeah. and Larry. Say what you want about Punk. Again, like you don't have to like him outside of the ring, right? But if you have watched even one interview with Punk, especially lately, this dude like gushes over his wife. He, yeah. Oh, anytime awesome. someone asks him about AJ, he's like, I would love As to have her should. on the road. Yeah, yeah. But you know, sometimes you just don't <laughs> see it. You know, sometimes you're just like, yeah, yeah. you know, whatever. It's, but it's like, yeah. He he loves his wife and he loves his dog. So the fact that the bracelet has their names on it, that's the whole fucking purpose. That's why it means so much to him. Like in the fact that a fan gave it to him at a meet and greet, that just adds another layer to it. You know what I mean? So to me, the fact that people are just like, oh, like it's stupid, like it doesn't make like why would punk care so much? Like I I just I don't really have time for that argument. To me, the brilliance of this match, besides the storytelling of it, was the fact that. It was everything that Drew was doing and Punk and Punk was claiming and kind of like picking on Drew and, and giving Drew shit about his him being emotional, him letting his emotions get the better of him. That's exactly what happened with Punk here. And the fact that it's the roles reversed and that Drew got the upper hand on Punk 
and the fact that it was Punk letting his emotions overtake him and pretty much just control the outcome of the match, that to me was like the beauty of it. And it doesn't matter if it was over a bracelet, what it was over. It was the simple fact that all this time, Money in the Bank has earned, or uh, not Money in the Bank, but when, oh yeah, Money in the Bank, when he won the briefcase later that evening, he Drew was like, if I win the briefcase, I'm cashing in. And he couldn't let his ego overcome him, right? Like he couldn't, or just set it to the side, like it overcame him. So the fact that that had been the story throughout and that Punk actually found himself in Drew's shoes now, and now Punk is going to be the incensed one and he's going to be the one out for revenge and things like that. Now, Drew, I don't know if you saw the press conference afterwards, um, Drew went to the panel that they had. It was like a Peter Rosenberg, Big E, uh, Wade Barrett, and I forget the woman's name. Um, but he yeah, just went out there. There's nothing too, nothing too. I mean, you didn't really miss much, but he was just like gloating. He had the bracelet on again. Um, and he was just like, yeah, he was like, oh, no, I'm there. Like, so what's next with you and Punk? And he's like, oh, no, I'm good. He was like, I did what I said I was going to do. I'm ready to move on type shit, you know, but he still has the bracelet. So. Obviously, this is going to be the end. Um, I forget what my prediction was for this. I think I predicted that Punk was going to win because it it, it would incense Drew even more. Same here. Um, but again, I I'm not. I I actually loved this outcome even more. But I'm just still not completely on board with Seth being involved. And I just and we'll probably end up getting a triple threat, maybe at the Bash in Berlin, paper PLE. But um, I just thought it's it's just not needed for me. It's kind of like. WrestleMania 35 with Ronda and Becky. Charlotte wasn't needed. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, okay. Yeah. But like, and I was just there. wasn't needed. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I just wasn't fucking needed. Um, but yeah, man. So what were your thoughts on this? And I, and again, I just, I just love, and I think, and to, before I'm sorry, before I give it to you, I, um, I think Punk looked great. I think he looked in great shape. Bro. You can see he had a V. He had the little V. I was like, okay, bro. Like, when was the last time we saw the V? And to be, in that type of shape, in ring shape, because they would, I think it's like 17 minutes, maybe mm -hmm. close to 17 minutes. When you really think about it, yes, he wrestled at the Royal Rumble, but for what, maybe 10 yeah. minutes? Not yeah. even. He had a one off match, it's maybe a two. Type of match. Yeah, two dark matches with Dominic Mysterio that didn't go over 10 minutes, I don't believe. Um, but that was months ago. And if you think before that, his last singles match was all in in Wembley Stadium and that fiasco with Joe, right? With the whole backstage shit with Jack Perry yeah. and all that. So the dude really hasn't been in the ring in almost a year, like full fledged. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I was impressed with him. Um, yeah, man. How about you? So the first thing I was going to say that you ended on was the physique of CM Punk. It's funny because I, I see images of CM Punk when he was in AEW and now this man oh is God. yoked. Dude, uh, yeah. If he was if he, he looked yeah, like he was on he, something in AEW. He looked like he was on yeah, some drugs and, or some shit. And people's yeah, like right in a bad way drugs. Now he looks yeah, like he's yeah, on drugs yeah. in a good way. And a lot of people say um that's yeah, the cool oh, that, there too. Perfect. With the gear yeah, and everything. Love that. Love that. Okay. That's amazing. Yeah, See man. nerds like us. Yeah, we obsess over <laughs> stuff like that. Like I'm Facts. obsessed of that image right there. It's just um, yeah. So the first thing, physique. Um, it's funny because a lot of people say like, uh, like on steroids, this and that. And there are things that after you become a 40 year old man, if you're doing something like this, that taking testosterone isn't a negative. Your body as a male does testosterone does go down as you age, and it's harder to. I don't know what they test for. I'm just saying the stigma of steroids because mm -hmm. there's other things that you could take supplement wise and, and you could be on a doctor that supplements you some type of steroids, but not needle in the, in, in the ass type thing. We're not talking yeah. back in the eighties the and nineties, but there are things most likely like you look at a guy like Drew, like how, is, how his physique is. You look at him when he was 10 years ago, whatever it was, it's like, these guys, when they come to WWE or they're in, they have the ability, I don't know the training set, but phenomenal shape. Not to mention AEW here. There's some guys in AEW and I watch every week and I'm just like, can you please take steroids? Can you please <laughs> eat a ham, a double, double cheeseburger or something? Because you look like you're hungry. That's the only thing I'll say about AEW. Um, yeah. But yeah, CM Punk's physique, his body is in just one year's time has looked so 
impressive to me. Um, yeah, stamina. You could see him at the end of yeah, like it's not really that good. I was surprised like, there's not like a no. good just still picture, but like you can see the V. He looks good and just broad. and just the chest and the shoulders, bro. Like yeah. you can you can see it. He was trying to add muscle. I I heard somewhere he was trying to add muscle. Obviously, he couldn't time wise, but like add too too much. But when he's wearing yeah. those um those uh cut tees that are like the uh you know how people cut they the t shirts to Sean. make it like a yeah. tank top. Bro, yeah. he's shredded. So um, yeah, shout out to CM Punk. You can see at the end of the match, I have it on now. He's he definitely gets winded. Uh yeah, as yeah. obviously yeah. hasn't been in a in a real fight or a, a match in, in some time, but you definitely see when he looks winded, he looks exhausted. Oh and he's not dude turns full it's like, red. <laughs> he it's like he just ran it's a so marathon. Funny. I feel bad for him. Like, yeah, he just worked a, a whole day shift at McDonald's, bro. Like he's sweating, he yeah. looks greasy. Like he is my cooked. dude looks rough. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So I think to add on to what you said, why do you think that Seth is involved in this? I'm so whenever I see something that doesn't make sense, I go, all right, business wise, what would I do? You have Seth Rollins is coming back from an injury and has in been injury prone, not weak injuries. He's yeah, exactly. Shredded. Mm -hmm. He's uh, Seth Rollins has what five years of three three injuries that put him out for six months or months at a time, mm -hmm. maybe seven years, eight years. So you're dealing with three guys. One of them is coming back from a knee injury, uh, and Seth Rollins, CM Punk, who nowadays he's made out of glass for some reason. So I think business wise, they're trying to make it so they have options moving forward. God forbid CM Punk gets hurt in this match. Boom. Seth Rollins comes in. If yeah. Seth Rollins gets hurt in a match or whatever, boom, CM Punk. So I think business wise, and I think this is the new era that they're doing is they're trying to set themselves up. So if an injury happens or something happens that they have an immediate plan B or plan C. So smart business by them. Seth yeah. Rollins, I I like that he's flashy. I liked his character. I thought him being with his gimmick of the shirt, the pants, the outfits, I think it does kind of take away from the match a little bit. It's taken away from focusing on the fight. So that's my only critique of it. Like Seth Rollins kind of made it about himself being the referee, where if you're going to be the referee. It's my ring, it's my there. rules, it's my this. It's like, no, it's not. Yeah, not even a and, like chill the fuck out. Yeah, yeah, chill. Exactly. So I think, but also the business end of that is trying to make it like, hey, Seth Rollins might be the referee, but he's involved in this as much as the other two guys. So I get that aspect. Uh the match itself, good. Uh no when CM Punk was, I didn't say I was gonna mention the other company. In the other company, the last few matches he had, there was a lot of you know missteps or mishaps uh that that didn't go whether it was execution <laughs> and he looked rusty and he looked not now he, he every, basically everything he did looked pretty pure and fluid um so shout out cm punk for that but drew mcintyre has taken his career on another level and that's just another guy they developed 20 years ago or 15 years ago and then they've redeveloped him again cm yeah. punk if he has a if he drops a brand new podcast or does anything tomorrow new, it'll be the best. If he, he'll have the number one podcast, he would have the number one talk show. He'd have the number one, whatever it is, Dude. show in general, because that's everybody wants to hear him talk. I can listen to CM Punk talk forever. And mm -hmm. in the ring he showed, and it was a great match. I, I love that they did now with him being the ref and the kind of interference, but kind of not. I had CM Punk winning like you did, but, um, Another situation where now you could go that way, go this way, triple threat. You could have now CM Punk versus Seth with Drew being the referee. You could just do things. You could just, there's there's abilities to just continue the story without it beginning bold, uh, boring or just old. And I love mm -hmm. another another example of we got another year of doing something like this and it it's going to be feel fresh and it's so personal too. all three yeah. of these guys, they're saying things, pulling back the curtain a little bit, like the way you treated me when I was younger, 10 years ago, 
the way you treated me, like pers- it's it's personal. So um, love it. Not n- nothing bad to say about this storyline, and and other than the little critiques that we said, but those are only the small nuances Minor, of it. Yeah. the bracelet, the uh, the the family angle, the personal. It's it's great. So I'm excited to see Survivor Series uh, is the next uh, PLE. That's uh, the n- next major one. Uh, that'll be a full year of CM Punk being in it. And even with an injury yeah, that kept him out since Royal Rumble, still relevant. He's like, he said, still has his, his mouth still works. As long as CM mm-hmm. Punk's mouth works, he'll always be somebody that you can watch. So I, lo- I love what they're doing here. So I'm excited to see what they do forward as well. I feel Please. like we're saying too many good things. I know, like, right? What's going on a right. year ago. I think we probably did a podcast and I'm like, Eh, I don't know. Yeah. Like I'm talking shit and I probably I sounded negative and I'll be honest, I call it what it is. Yeah. I haven't said too many negative things about rest, uh, WWE in a, in a really long time. I like what they're doing. No, 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 no sign of the Wyatt six, which is great. Didn't take away from matches. Yeah. I like that. They, um, they could easily a- throw that in there just to do it. Easily. Yeah. Just to get that entrance out there. Um, they have, they're they promoting them. Perfect. Yeah. They're promoting them for Raw, so I like that. Uh, 